Oh my goodness. All right. No, I don't want to share this. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Hey, how are we doing? All right. Oh, that's not open. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> Start again. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us through all those technical difficulties. Um, again, my name is Josh. I work at developer relations at Near slash Pagoda. Um, I want to talk about decentralized front ends that are chain agnostic. Um, and yeah, part of the what I was starting with was why am I here, um, which was very top of mind for me. Like thinking about the space, thinking about the state of things, um, and what drew me to this space and why I'm deciding to stay here um, is because of my core values. And what brought me to this place is because I want to make a real impact on real people's lives in a positive way. And I feel like this technology has that opportunity. Um, not everybody sees it that way, and that's okay, but that's what I'm here for. And part of that is decentralization. It's actually not part of it, it's, it's the main thing. And we talk about this all the time. Decentralization, decentralization, cool. That's a great word, what does that mean? And for me, it's about distributing the power. Like, it's owned by a couple people. Like, the internet was started at, you know, free. We just peer-to-peer, -peer, let's share information. Um, and then it gets a little bit more consolidated and there's gatekeepers. Um, you know, I want to be a part of something that's going to be disrupting existing systems um, and putting power back into the individual. Um, and again, another part of that is open source. And what does open source mean to me? It's like the free access to information. Um, not everyone has that. And I think it's really important that we share information and that resources are shared. Um, and that's what it really brings me here. So. I think it's time to transfer the internet ownership to people that actually use it, uh, and not the people that are you know, gatekeeping it, but the individual users should be the ones that actually own it. Um, and I feel that is our responsibility as developers um, who have knowledge and the resources and the expertise to contribute to that. Like, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, Spider-Man reference, but it's true. Like, I think it's super important to be a part of this movement in a powerful way, in a, in a positive way. Um, and, you know, we have this magical uh, ability to make bits do things, and I think we need to use it in the right way. So, that's my soapbox. I'll step off of that now and kind of get into um, the current DAP architecture, um, architecture today, um, which, <laughs> chatting with a, a guy that I work with and felt a little rugged when I got here. Oh, decentralized apps. Oh, it's all decentralized, but it's not really. Um, this is how it works now for developers. This is kind of a developer um, focused uh, talk, but um, basically all of your source code, assets, everything is on a regular Web2 database. It's, you know, Amazon, Google, all that stuff. Great. That's fine. Uh, but just a little tiny bit of it it's on the blockchain. Um, so, you know, yeah, I get it. How are we going to move that needle from not really that decentralized to more decentralized? Um, and that's kind of what I'm really excited about, about the blockchain operating system. It's a stack. It's not something that you can run on your phone or your computer that people are asking. Um, what's this operating system? How can I run it? Um, it's a, a framework where we're using the blockchain in a way where we're storing crucial state and your source code all on a smart contract that's on the blockchain. And then any larger assets, we utilize IPFS, store pictures on that peer-to-peer -peer network, and then everything else is stored on chain. Uh, I was pretty stoked. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. All of my source code is, started and is stored in a smart contract, uh, and it really blew my mind. I was really like, taken aback that we were actually able to make this a reality. Um, you can try it yourself. You can go to near.org. You can sign up. Here's a QR code. I'll um, bring you back to that in a second. But what I want to talk, what I want to go through with a couple minutes that I have left uh, is a demo of how to actually do this and what it looks like. So we go here, we'll go to near.org, uh, and I just want to let everyone know and developers know we're in alpha. We literally built this in the last four months of engineers figuring out how we're going to take this technology and actually build this system. So please try it out, report some bugs, help us figure this out. But this is the landing page right now. I'm currently logged in using FastAuth. It's really awesome. I wish I had more time to tell you about it, but it's the most easiest onboarding Web3 I've ever seen. Stoked on it. Try it out right now on your phone or on your computer. Um, but yeah, I'm currently 
currently logged in up here with the near account. I have, a, um, I won't get into zero bounds because that just probably doesn't make uh, sense right now. But um, all these are components over here on the side, which are apps. It's kind of like a decentralized app store to a degree um, and able to publish components to the world. I can take a look at, okay, this is a cool chess game. Let me take a look at it. Let me look at the details. All the source code is published online. I can look at dependencies. It's kind of like an NPM package. I can see, all right, what dependency are we using here? How are we, um, uh, how are we using these components? And, um, and, and what's the source code? And what's the history of it? I can actually see, okay, this was only one commit, but like the commit history is focused on the block height. So as P, uh, developers are pushing code, you can see a history of it, and I can look at the entire history of an application, and I can see if anybody's changing code, and we can be open and transparent um, with everyone. So it's pretty cool. I think I lost my back button. Yeah, there it is. Let's go back to um, this. So yeah, if I wanted to go ahead and say develop, I go to this develop, I can go to the sandbox, and um, we have a profile page and everything you can view the source code of. Um, so I can take a look at my profile page, I can come over here, I can render a preview, and this is kind of what my profile page looks like, and I can look at all the source code that's inside it, and I can make edits to it if I want to, and publish a version of my profile that I want. Um, I don't have to worry about, like, say, Facebook's gonna change the way that things look. I can make it look however I want, and I can subscribe to whatever, whatever I want. Um, so yeah, say I wanted to, get um, outside of Nier's ecosystem. I just want to use Nier as my place to host my front end code and I want to connect my back end to Ethereum or any other blockchain, I can do that. Um, there is a component here called Lido. We'll go ahead and open it and um, we can render a preview. And um, yeah, I don't, if anybody's seen this before, it's basically a way that you can stake uh, on Ethereum. I'll go ahead and I'll connect with Web3. I'll connect my MetaMask. Oh no. And this is, of course, because I restarted my computer. Oh, nice, sweet, it worked. All right, we're on Ethereum, wow, that's amazing. And now I'm logged in with Ethereum. Again, alpha, I would like this button to be kind of moved up a little bit. But now I have this Lido component that I can go ahead and take a look at, look at all the history um, of Lido. And I can actually, if I search for it again, it's probably the easiest way to do it. I can embed this if I want to go back to my profile page, um, go into the source code, say around uh, line 177, I can go ahead and import this widget source right here, render a preview, and now I have that component that's embedded. So it's like this composability that I can grab any kind of open source component, embed it into my profile, I could import, import this into my application. Say I wanna take this app and now build upon that. So it's a way in which we can have communal building of applications in this decentralized, open source, super transparent way, and kind of look at what the history is of, uh, yeah, of the entire um, development cycle um, for everything. I'm running out of time. Uh, <laughs> maybe I was on my soapbox a little bit too much in the beginning, but, uh, but yeah, you can take a look at a lot of different components. You can search for them, you can fork them. Um, I'm really excited to see what we can make out of this. And oh, I didn't, I didn't show uh, the last part. So yeah, if I wanted to, I had the, the profile page that I now rendered a preview. Okay, cool, so this is my new profile page. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that uh, profile page but mine, and then I will confirm it, and then I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna describe what happened. I added Lido, and it's like a commit history. I'm gonna save it, and it saves it on chain, kind of shows you, all right, we're gonna put this on the blockchain, stores all that, um, takes all that information, stores it. This is all a live demo, which I'm super stoked it's working <laughs> and not having the, that issue. Um, and then it's now published and now it's distributed. I don't have any gatekeepers. I can go to the uh, components page and it'll show you the most recent component that was just shipped. And now I have immediate access to my user base and I'm able to distribute applications to people instantly, not have any censorship, not have any resistance, um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. So I would like you to join me and build something cool using this platform. Um, please talk to me after the talk. Um, I'd love to talk tech with you and talk about like, what do you have maybe ideas that we can help, uh, yeah, kind of shape the Web3 space and the way that we want it to go. So with that, I will stop talking, and thank you for dealing with all my stuff. Woo!